Hey guys, Smasher32 here for the second part of the Banjo-Kazooie tutorial for 100%. This is going to cover the rest of the route, which is Freezes -E Peak, second part, Rusty Bucket Bay, Click Clock Wood, and the rest of the game, which is just Furnace Fun and Fighting Grunty, the final boss. So first thing I'm going to note immediately is you only need three eggs up until the rest of this part. For the rest of the run, you either find eggs on the west on the way, or they're not really that big of a deal. So, starting with that, we're just gonna get right into this. Um, so right now, we're gonna grab these notes. You actually don't want to hold up all the way, or else you'll just skip over it like that. So what I like to do is I like to hold up a little bit. And I know it seems kind of, kind of counterintuitive, but I'm gonna skip this last note for later. You'll see why. For here, just stomp this box, cancel the text, and we're gonna kill the first green guy and just run off screen. And just jump on the box. And it seems kind of weird that I'm just kind of running off doing absolutely nothing, but since the enemies are not spawning, you can already see that the twinkly count is starting to drop down. So this is a good time to go to the bathroom, um, interact with your chat, check your email, um, Grab something to eat, although you only have maybe 30 seconds to do that, so I wouldn't recommend that. Once you see the number drop down to 1, as I'm getting ready to do it, you want to enter Talent Trot and immediately start running. Because that last twinkly is going to go right in there. So cancel the text. Go behind the Christmas tree, grab four of these notes. And since I don't feel like being a sharpshooter, I'm going to jump to the, uh, the star. And poop bags, because it's actually faster. One, two, three, talent trot. Cancel the text. And now we're kind of on a timer, so I have to be a little fast here. So I'm gonna grab this note. And before I use the flight pad, I'm going to grab the notes and the ginger. Hopefully I don't get sniped. Right before I grab this, oh god, I got sniped. So right before turn around, rat attack rap, that helps it grab the ginger a little bit easier. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to attempt to beak bomb right to the top of the Christmas tree, land on the tree, and then I'm going to basically go through the star three times to activate the lights. There's a chance I may screw up here, so just bear with me. So, one, two. And that's ideally how it should go. I'll post a video of that on YouTube, just so you can see what's going on. From here, um, you want to fly a little bit, and you want to do the buttons. Use two more feathers, beak bomb. And use one more feather here, beak bomb, and then we're just going to bomb right down to the Christmas tree, uh, the brown area, or the brown bridge. It's not, yeah, it's kind of a bridge. Spam talent trot. Hopefully you don't tumble. Climb up to the tree, and we're going to grab these 12 notes. Easy to remember this, 12 days of Christmas, 12 notes. So it's pretty easy to remember if you're kind of keeping this tally in your head. Right a tad onto the pole, go wherever, all the way to the top, and from here jump and then rat a tat wrap up to the top. And from here you can just kind of walk off and stomp. So once you land, spam talent trot, grab this token, and keep going. Next, we're going to try and snipe the snowman. My feather count is actually a little low right now, so I'm going to grab some extra feathers. Ideally, you want around 10, but if we're going to play it safe, we're, uh, I'm going to go with 14 instead. That's a good number. So, note that the target is obviously the X on the snowman, but when they throw their snowball, that hitbox moves, so you either have to snipe them before or after the throw, not during unless you purposely aim for it. So he throws it, hit the top. Uh, you usually don't need to use, get him right before, there we go. After that second one, use one feather, so that way you can adjust for any loss in height. Use one more feather after this one, and after you snipe this one, use two feathers and that'll give you enough altitude to hit this guy without too much adjusting. Oop, that was a strange angle. At least it'll show off this part easier. From here, 
I want to just beak bomb to Mumbo. Ideally, I want to land in the loading zone. It wouldn't be that smooth. I just got a really convenient angle. From here, oops, jump up here, grab the six notes, and the Jinjo, and then just jump down to Mumbo, and transform. So, this will transform us into the Walrus. And the only things we really need to do with the Walrus is just the race and activate Waza, so that we can enter his cave later. So we're gonna flop over here to the left, and the first thing we're gonna do is just... We're gonna ignore those notes on the house, you'll see why later. We're gonna grab seven of these nine notes in the freezing pond, and after that note, grab that honeycomb. Technically you can do it anywhere, but it's more convenient when you do it there, just because of timing. Um, so you see those, there's still two notes in the freezing pond. We're gonna get those later. Um, and then we're gonna just plop all the way over here. You can jump. I think it's, I honestly don't think it's a little, I think it's a little faster actually. So jump to the sled, cancel the text, jump on, and then start the race. So from here, before I start the race, you wanna grab a handful of notes. I'll point out where the no notes are. And you also want to grab um, the Jiggy that's in between the feet. So here we go, we're going to start the race. So right now we're going to grab the Jiggy that's in between the feet, skips the Jiggy Jig obviously, and two notes on the left foot. So one, two. Go back up here. And whenever you see an uphill path, always jump because it speeds you up a lot. Doesn't help that buggy kind of blocks your path sometimes. You can jump if you want to every other time, it might be a little faster. It's not a huge deal because Boggy does rubber band, don't forget about that. We're gonna go over here, grab two of these, we're gonna leave that last note for Banjo. We're gonna grab these two notes in the freezing pond now. And we're gonna grab all three of these notes on the house. There was a Momo token on the way to uh, Boggy, I just grabbed it. Make sure you don't grab it while um, you're going to Boggy. Skip that note, that's for Banjo as well. Grab a feather if it's on the way, and if it's convenient. Little uphill path, jumps, jump, jump, and jump. We're gonna grab three of these four notes. One, two, three. And if you can, we're gonna grab one more note over here. I know it looks like I'm a little behind, but don't forget, jumping is faster. So cancel that text, Jiggy spawns automatically. And grab the Jiggy. A little plop in. We're just gonna talk to Waza. This is actually one of the exceptions to the rule of skipping text. You cannot skip this text no matter how hard you try, so you just have to hold A and speed through it. Kinda silly, but sometimes whenever text is tied to a, tied to a cutscene, excuse me, you can't skip it. It's It only happens a few times, and that was the second time. So we're gonna grab this Jiggy and grab this note, actually. And jump in the water, grab that Mumbo token. If you find yourself that you don't have that many eggs, this is a great time to grab two of them. You only need hypothetically three, but you're almost certainly going to find one more egg by the time you get to um, Rusty Bucket Bay. So we're just going to do a little, little bit more plopping. If you need that gold feather, go ahead and grab it. It's not that big of a deal. Enter here, and finally we're going to transform back into Banjo, because Walrus is too slow. Probably the slowest transformation out of all of them. Silly, but slow. So, Talon Trot, get out of here. And we're gonna jump right into the water. Don't even bother with the boots, they are too slow. And you also want to keep an eye on how much health you have as of now. So fortunately, I have a lot of health. We're gonna jump up here. Don't bother talent trotting or ratatat wrapping. That's a easy jump to land. So from here, we're gonna go on the scarf. If you feel comfortable with zooming out, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna keep the camera like this, and just make sure you grab all of these feathers and all of these notes. The feathers are actually very important for Click Clockwood and the final battle, depending on whether or not you skip the feather note door. But I will get to that when I get to the fight. So from here, a little detour on accident. Um, see, I just crossed over the same path twice. Grab the Jinjo. Grab, oop, 
You don't need that feather, you can grab it if you want. But spring shock up to the nose. And when we fly, we're going to use three feathers. One, two, three. And this is actually pretty important. There are eight notes on the top of this <clears throat> on the top of this hat, excuse me. You're going to grab seven of them. So that's two. Oops. Three, four, five, six. And you'll notice that there's no note there's no note past that one. Um, we're going to use that note as sort of a visual indicator of where to go next. Now we're going to grab this jiggy. And then don't even bother entering Talon Trot. And you want to... Ooh, ooh, excuse me. Roll. Make sure you flutter, because you actually cannot land that without getting hurt. And then we're going to use Stomp Re... Oh, stomp, we're going to Stomp Recoil. Basically, let me explain this really quickly. When you use Stomp Recoil, as in you stomp, hit the ground, and then fall... After you hit the ground and fall, you don't take any damage anywhere. So, I'm going to exploit that just by falling straight down, all the way to the water. And the only reason I got hurt is because I did land in water. So from here, I'm going to grab this Mambo token and these notes. Something I will mention is there are notes around this other leg. We're going to avoid them and grab them during the second race. It's actually kind of tricky to do that without losing the race so if you're a new runner i actually recommend grabbing these notes first otherwise we're just going to ignore them completely just to show off what you're supposed to do so after that after you grab everything over that leg jump right a tap wrap here so i actually have seven health here this is kind of a lot of health ideally you want to be at five health here but i'll roll with the punches because why not so we're going to talk to Bahi. Do not skip this text, because otherwise you'll have to talk to him again. That being said, once you actually do accept, you can you have to do one of two things. Either cancel the text really quickly, or wait until you land and Kazooie peeks his head out. Because if you wait like a little bit of time, you'll accidentally lose a little bit of time just because. So he lands, and then Kazooie peeks his head out, cancel the text, and here we go. Second race. So, this part is actually kind of difficult. What we're going to do is, around this, collect one, two, three notes and a token, and jump. There we go. Just keep going with the race. If you can, just kind of pass him, because he's a jerk. Keep going through the slum gates. We are going to grab this note that we missed earlier. There's a Jinja, oh, right behind this house that we're going to grab. There should be one left that's totally normal. Remember, Boggy does rubber band, so this is normal that he's past you. We're gonna grab this note now, just to allow the rubber banding to kick in a little bit more. Try and pass him, because why not? And right at the top, we're gonna jump down, forget all those other feathers, grab that note, and we're gonna race to the finish. And bam! That is the second race. So from here, just grab the Jiggy, once again using the rat attack rat. Ah, make sure you actually grab it. And from here, we should only have two more notes to grab, which is just these two right here. Yep. And we are going to go grab that last Jinjo in Boggy's cave, or I'm sorry, in Waz's cave. So unfortunately, there's no real good way to avoid this dance skip. So we're just going to have to deal with watching it. By the way, just to point out, there's a little ice key back there. I'm sure you all know why that ice key is there, but we're not going to talk about that anymore than we need to. So like I said before, I am at 7 health right now. I want to be at 5, so I'm going to get hit twice in this fire. Normally, you have to, you're going to be at a health detriment and you have to find health. It just so happens I have a lot of health here. So what you want to do now, make sure you're in Talon Trot for this part. You're going to go to the edge of the water and jump. To that hole. So it looks like once I get to the other side, this is the reason you need 5 health by the way, once I get to the other side, it looks like it's going to be tight timing, just make sure you jump about a half a second after you surface, so right about there, and then just death warp on this guy. So from there, talent trot, and we're done with Freeze's Epic 2. So from there, we're going to go up here, 
Either high jump or just jump up there with Talent Trot. If you need feathers, that's a great place to grab four of them. And Spring Chop up to here. And Talent Trot if you need to. And stomp that switch. Don't miss it. From there, grab these shoes and run to the flight pad. Make sure you did destroy that web earlier, or otherwise you're gonna have to kind of take care of it now. Also, you can just hit you can just hit A when you land on that shock swing pad. You do not need to cancel Talent Trot. From here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab two Jiggies. One you can probably see in uh, the Grunchy statue's eye, and the other is the Freezes the Peak Wall. So from here. We're gonna beak bomb the glass eye, and we're gonna kinda do a pelican dive to try and grab the jiggy. Hopefully I don't land. Yep, all right. If it's easier for you, make sure you hold up instead of down. The reason I hold down is because it is a little bit faster than holding up. So just fly through this top part. And what you wanna look for is a little kind of graphical, you probably see it, like a graphical box it looks like there's some lines there. You want to use a feather, get a little bit above that line, and then beak bomb right into the wall. So it's going to look like that. Just grab the Jiggy, because it's right there. Grab the token. And just to go a little bit faster, we're going to grab these shoes and just run. Well, don't run into the wall. That's kind of a silly thing to do. Oop. And once we go in here, the water should already be filled up, or to the second level, so just swim to the second switch. Or, swim to the second switch, excuse me. Make sure you don't get hit by this guy. He doesn't really see you until kind of late, so you really shouldn't be getting hit by him. This part you can either high jump, or you can do like the other parts, just talent try to jump up to it and then jump there. For this part, I like to be right next to the box, because if you rat attack rat kind of far from it, you can actually fall back in the water, and it's pretty inconvenient. So from after you hit the switch, just jump. It'll give you a little bit more distance. And we're going to go all the way over here, just to open Rusty Bucket Bay. Let's see if I can get that quick talent trot. Yep, that tw quick talent trot will save a fraction of a second because every second counts. Alright, Rusty Bucket Bay is now open, and that is ex exactly where we're going right now. So Rusty Bucket Bay, I'm sure everyone has terrible nightmares about this level of just this level's way too hard, primarily because of the water and the engine room. Fortunately, the engine room is pretty early in the run, so if you mess it up, it's not that bad. And the water, we honestly don't go in too often. So, Talent Trot. And just go up this bridge, grab all the notes. And we're gonna go in this pipe. Um, there's an ideal way to do this. And what do you want to do? Excuse me is you want to jump up to the feather platform and rat -tat wrap up to there, don't get hit by that guy. And from there you want to jump up to the note and rat -tat and kill that guy. The thing you have to really watch out for is this pipe is sticking out from the wall. So there's a chance if you try and do that you might accidentally get stuck in the wall. That's just something you gotta practice unfortunately. So once we do that, grab the token. There's a gold feather right behind here, pretty well hidden. And let's get out of here. So from there, jump on that. Oops. Don't fall down. Let's try that again. Grab these notes. And hit that. And we're, we're in. So from here, we're going to just walk off and flutter right to this honeycomb right here. You can be as fast or as slow as you want with this. I'm probably going to take it slow just for the purposes of this tutorial, but, well, kind of slow. So notice how fast these are spinning right now. You can actually jump on these. The faster it spins, obviously, the more time you have to take on it. Don't let that guy hit you. That could probably sabotage you a little bit. So 
Normally, I would go across when everything is full speed. But as I said, I'm just doing this to show off um, what to do. So from here, it actually does matter where you're facing, because that's exactly where the camera is going to spawn, or the direction of the camera is going to show. So you want to try facing, if you can, it's not a big deal, because you can adjust it later, as close to the propeller as possible. So this is where it starts to get really intense and tricky. From here, after you hit the switch, you want to go as close to center of this fan as possible. If you need to, make sure you adjust the camera using Z and R, and you want it pretty much lined up, because that's the direction you're going to run in. So there we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk into the fan. After I walk into the fan, spam the roll button, which is B, and then once I get right next to the fan, I'm going to short hop. So let's see what happens. See, I just made it through. So that part is pretty intense, I'm not going to lie. You will have to practice that. Just remember, it's you're walking into the fan, and then you're going to roll to get the speed, and then you're going to short hop, because if you get hit on the other side, then there's a chance you can still make it on the other side, because you won't get shot off in the other direction. So this fan is actually a little bit easier than the other fan, in my opinion, but you can still mess up here. So let's see what happens. See? All right. From here, we're just going to stop the switch. And I'm going to walk up, grab this extra life, and actually kind of teleport through the wall. There's no real reason to grab the extra life. I believe it does help with the camera position. It's kind of superstition. So I always grab it. From there, jump on the lifeboat, grab the Mumbo token. If you do accidentally fall off while grabbing these notes, just go straight for the Jiggy and get these notes later. So, in addition to that, if you feel like you're very pressed for time, because I'm going to be grabbing all of these notes and the Jinjo and then the Jiggy, feel free to grab this earlier. Make sure if you do quick, fi quick dive for that, it's not a good or very deep quick dive because the hole is not very low. So from there, after all that that I was trying to rush through, swim in here, grab the jiggy, and get the heck out of there. You can either surface or you can keep swimming if you think, or surface if you think you're going to run out of air. It just so happens that if you do everything underwater perfectly, you should always make that. But if you kind of struggle underwater, surface immediately and start um, start flapping on top of the water because then you won't lose air as much. Grab the orange digital, so grab the, or kill that first guy. Grab that guy. And what I'm going to do is when I jump, I'm going to move off to the water and back onto the slope. It kind of abuses that slope rule so that I can get the jump off of it. One, two, one, two. And for this part, make sure the camera is... I, this is what I do personally. Camera is against the wall. Uh, so, shock spring up here. Roll and grab those notes. If you prolong the roll uh, with, the sh uh, with the flip flat move, flat flip, the high jump move, excuse me, you can kind of just roll into all of those notes, but it is a little tricky. You also do need a good camera angle. Hit that switch. Drop that box. Oops. Actually, climb on the ladder. This is a really good time uh, to grab a gold feather if you need it. I will just for sake of art, just because I can. I don't really need gold feathers because eight is a lot, and I know that I'm gonna grab two by the time I hit click clock wood anyway. So eight is a good number for here. We're gonna jump to that witch switch. A good visual indicator is this line right here. You can jump anywhere past this line. So you can jump here, you can jump here, you can jump all the way out if you need to. I like to jump around here. And make sure you rat a tat wrap or else you will not make that jump. And unfortunately, if you miss that jump, you kind of have to uh, traverse some boxes in order to get back up. There's no convenient way to get back up here. So from there, roll off, fall in the hole, move forward a little bit, and in that position, shoot three eggs, talent trot. He's hit, talent, er, 
use invincibility, and we just grab the Jiggy and he kind of disappears. The reason for that is once he grabbed the Jiggy, he despawns, but because that we were because we were able to hit him with the eggs, he's immediately going to start moving. I feel like I should have swapped my explanation, explain it, and then do the trick. Anyway, Talent Trot, this is actually a pretty easy jump to make, so don't even be afraid about that, falling in the hole, I mean. And we're going to go right down these stairs, break the window, Talent Trot, don't get hit by that guy, and jump in the window. We want to go into Talent Trot because if we're in Talent Trot, we can just start moving immediately. So we're going to grab these four notes. What I'm also going to do, actually, I'm going to grab an extra uh, Mumbo token. There's one right on this bed. I probably won't need it, but I'm going to grab it just to be on the safe side. If you don't think you need it, by all means, skip it. So from here, Talent Trot, oop, we're going to run into this wall and jump off of it so that we can grab this ladder. If you land in the water, you kind of do a huge dive, or kind of like a huge plummet into the water, so you want to make sure you grab that ladder. Enter the box on the right, grab only these four notes, there's nothing else in here, so get out. And then you want to traverse these boxes and get to the top in the middle blue crate. The only thing that's in here jump to this box with the feathers and then this box with the mambo token and we're just gonna fall right onto the blue Jinjo. So the only thing that's in there is just a token and a Jinjo, nothing special. Talent Trot, go into that crate and there's a bunch of notes in here that are actually pretty tricky to get. The ones on the ground are fine. Normally for this part in order to not lose speed, people like to jump past, or continue jumping at this part. I'm going to utilize a safe strategy here. Just kind of run past everything, as I've done with all the other, these other guys. If you are running into the wall, keep in mind that you will get hit, so be careful about that. And remember, those green guys do take off two hits, so you really need to keep an eye on your health. So from here, jump, and land in the water. Oop. One jump too many. Make sure you do not spam buttons there, because it actually can mess you up. Just A four times, that's all you need. Jump to the green acid, grab these notes and the Jinjo. Come on, I want to show off something. There we go. Alright, so little interesting tidbit. If you shock spring... Oop, Oops, let me try it one more time. If you shock spring, and your body looks like that, you can actually stomp right here. And it'll put you right through the floor. It's kind of, it's not extremely useful, but um, it is something just to keep in mind. Grab these notes, high jump here. So what's going to happen is, once I hit this switch, this crane is going to rise up. There's two ways we can get to it. One is we can go all the way, jump to that lifeboat, and then go up to the that jiggy. That is what I consider a very hard method. We're going to do instead an easier method, which is just beak bomb the button, climb the ladder, and then fall down. Kind of what we were intended to do. So make the long climb. If you need the feather, you do have time to grab it. I wouldn't recommend it though. And I'll explain why. So jump down, flutter out of your talent truck. And normally, right here, there's a cutscene that activates about five seconds, or about a few seconds from now. Or it activates a few seconds from now. Before that cutscene activates, we want to get into the kitchen. And that's not going to happen. Eh. Yeah, see, that's what happens if you accidentally use a gold feather instead of going into Talent Trot. It's not a big deal, just only loses a couple of seconds. You're going to grab five notes in the kitchen, and we're also going to grab this Mumbo token, even if it does hurt us a little bit. Grab the health, because why not? We're going to go left and enter this window. 
I'm gonna try do, doing something a little tricky. There's a spot on the edge of the bed you can jump off. It'll angle your position, and you can actually grab this jiggy in the next room. See if I can do it. Nope. That's fine. So... Unfortunately, I can't really show it off now. But there is a way you can you can grab that jiggy by angling your body. You have to jump at the edge of the bed, though. So from here, we're gonna jump up to that... That, um, I'm not sure what the term is for that. The thing that's holding the lifeboat. There's two ways you can do it. You can either jump while still in Talent Shot up to there. Or you can do what I like to do. Uh, cancel Talent Shot. Go as Banjo. And then jump up here. Because you have to cancel Talent Shot anyway and high jump up to here. The nice thing about doing this as Banjo is that, let's say you miss... Well, you can flutter back. And if you don't flutter back, that means you just made the jump. So I like to cancel Talon Trot there. So high jump here, grab that note. Avoid the ladder, and just jump up here. Grab these notes. Climb up another ladder. Grab some more notes. And then grab the jiggy at the top of the smokestack on this one or at this smokestack. What I like to do, actually, is jump off the ladder, roll, and then kind of use that extended duration with the, uh, the high jump. Like that. Obviously, you can roll to it if you want. Um, don't bother going to Talent Trot because you will just enter fall animation like that, or you'll hit yourself. Uh, from here, roll, and then rat a tat wrap that window. You don't even need to flutter. Enter Talent Trot. Immediately start moving and grab these notes in the jiggy. Ah! These guys are all jerks, I swear. And from here, there's actually a really nice setup for this. All you have to do, from Talent Trot, if you feel comfortable with it, is hold down left, jump to the, uh, the hangar, and then jump up. Works every time, that's the only setup. If you don't feel comfortable, feel, just go as Banjo because it is notably easier to get that. The code for this is never random, it is always 312111. After you hit that, do a little fancy dance, jump up in the air, and grab the jiggy. If you stomp right before the anime, or the cutscene to say, hey, you got the jiggy. Um, if you stomp right before that happens, you kind of arbitrarily get a lot of air for some reason. You cancel out of the stomp. It's kind of a silly trick, nothing special. Anyway, um, from there, grab the token. We're gonna go right here and just jump. And pff, we're gonna miss that jump completely. Sometimes it does happen. Unfortunately, um, what I should have done was not cancel Talent Trot and I would have just landed right on the edge. It does happen, not a big deal. So anyway, what I wanted to do was grab these notes. Make sure you use your shadow to make sure you keep an eye on where you are. Your shadow is a huge indicator of where you should be as far as traversing those angles. Break that. Hold down left and spam A. And then hold A once you get the flutter. And then just grab that jiggy. I like the talent trot here. Jump. Once again, making sure you keep an eye on your shadow when you jump to this. Jump off, and then grab these four notes. And we're gonna go right to Snorkel's area. Which is right here. And this part may seem a little intimidating at first, but I promise it's actually not that difficult. From here. There's four guys, you can either kill them, or you can just hold forward and run through them and not get hit. As I said, looks intimidating, actually isn't. It's these guys that are more intimidating. Make sure you grab these last four notes without getting hit. And stomp the switch. Cancel this snorkel text as he gets ripped in half. And then grab the jiggy once you exit. So Talent Trot, what I like to do 
cancel talent shot there go right back into it technically there is a faster way but it only loses a couple of frames milliseconds really also i am coming up to a death warp soon so i actually don't need to be at this much health so once i get to the last uh green slime i'm not really sure what his name is unfortunately um i'm just gonna get hit by him on purpose and lose two health like that. So now I'm at 3 health. 3 is a comfortable number. Um, if I wanted to be ideal, I would be at 1 health right now. So we're gonna swim down here. Grab this honeycomb. And grab this Jinjo. He's gonna spawn... Okay, first off, let's get this guy out of the way so I can explain what's going on. We're gonna grab the Jiggy, or the, grab the Jinjo, excuse me. He's gonna spawn a Jiggy. And I'm going to try doing that trick where I grab the Jiggy and land in the water. Um, this is actually kind of a hard trick just because you don't have a lot of space to work with. There is a good backup strategy, which I'll show off instead because it's easier to do. So I'm going to let that spawn. I'm going to, let, I'm going to kill the, or get that guy to go away. And what I'm going to do from here is when the buoy gets kind of at a low point from Banjo's point of view, I'm going to jump but I'm not gonna press any other buttons. I'm just gonna hold forward and jump. So wait for it. Notice how I did not enter the dance, even though that was the 10th Jiggy. Especially because the, la the last Jiggy is an extremely long dance. So that is pretty, pretty crucial that you try and hit that. So from here, we're just gonna swim forward. Kill this guy. And enter Talent Trot. So, once again, this guy does deal two health. I'm at three. I want to be at one. So we're going to get hit by this guy. Ack. We're going to land on the water for no reason. Make sure you don't get killed by this guy. Just play it safe. Don't grab that health either. Wait until the honeycomb is at the top of the screen. Use a feather. Stomp, and you're dead. And hope you don't fall in the water, because that actually does waste time. And from there, you don't need to enter Talent Trot, so just um, leave. So just leave. So that was... Rusty Bucket Bay, in my opinion, is a very intimidating level, but it's not a hard level with a little practice, even. It's the next level that's very intimidating, and it's actually hard because it's a very long level. And I'll explain that once we get to it. So from here, we're just gonna swim forward and grab this Jiggy. Don't bother entering Talent Trot, just go over here. Jump, jump, high jump. Make sure you have 800 notes, because if you have any other number, something's wrong. And this is the only time where I say, make sure you're in Talent Trot because this next part is actually pretty important. Um, from here, what we're gonna do is kinda just blaze through all the tentacles that are trying to hit us. What I'm gonna do is hang the left wall, and on the second to last tentacle, jump, and on the last tentacle, swing right. So I'll say that one more time as I'm doing it. So we're just gonna hang the left wall. And then at the second to last one, jump, and then hang right. From here, we're going to attempt to jump up to this leaf. It's kind of a finicky jump, so it may take you two try a few tries. excuse me. The visual indicator I use is this little black dot I use, or that's to the left of me. It's probably a little hard to see. Make sure it's at your left foot on the very edge, and just high jump to it. And made it. First try. Very nice. So from there... Grab these feathers, they are important. And just stomp the switch. Doesn't really matter what you do. Even if you enter Talon Trot, you're still gonna be kicked out of it. So just Talon Trot here. And go to the cauldron. If you can, try and grab this gold feather. Either that or jump into the cauldron. Either or. I like to grab the feather just so I don't have to grab it on the way back. From there, enter Talent Trot. And 
Remember that Jiggy a long time ago from Clanker's Cavern? Where the two witches' eyes popped out? We're finally gonna go back and grab it. Saw these two, move to the nose, and hopefully you grab the Jiggy. After that, we're gonna open Click Clock Wood. Make sure you don't forget this, I've seen a handful of people, including myself, actually just completely overlook this part. It's either the Jiggy they overlook or opening the actual puzzle. So before I even get to the puzzle, I'm just gonna move over here, grab this token, and open up the puzzle. Actually, I don't even need to enter Talent Trot, just jump in the water. Hmm. Actually, let me just... Ah! I just want to see something really quickly. I feel like something's wrong. That's interesting. I should have, um... 9 out of 10 right now, so apparently I'm missing a Jiggy. Um, hmm. I'm not going to worry about it for now. Everything is still valid, but you should have 9 out of 10 Jiggies there. I probably missed something. I did have to cut stream, um, and I did have to redo some of this, so there, there might be some inconsistencies between the two parts, but I should definitely have... 20 out of 20 jiggies right now, not 19. So we're gonna pretend that's normal. It's not gonna affect anything in the long run, this is just gonna be 99%. Anyway, click clock wood. We're gonna stomp the switch and enter Talent Trot. Keep going. And notice all these notes that are out here. We're gonna avoid those. We're gonna get the two on the right later after spring, and we're gonna get the left two uh, once we go back to spring. We're gonna do two visits in spring. So the first spring is, in my opinion, one of the easiest parts. Actually, spring altogether is pretty easy. So high jump up here and roll. We're gonna grab those three notes. Technically, you can grab them on the second visit. I like to grab them now, even though it is a little slower. Jump up here. And there are three birds here that we either avoid or kill, or we can do something that I like to do and just run past them. Just make sure you don't get hit. Uh, grab the feathers if you need them. And talent, or spring shot, jump up there. And this is a deceivingly tricky jump. We're gonna jump all the way to that air bridge. Try not to be afraid of jumping to it, because you can easily make that. Oop. Kill that guy. Ah. Wanted his health. Oh well. So from there, grab these feathers. And for this egg, it actually does matter where you stomp the egg. Um, when you stomp the egg, your trajectory really depends on where you land. So if you stomp the back, you're going to fly way back. And if you stomp the front, you're going to fly way forward. So make sure you're as far forward in the egg as you can, just to avoid some of that backtracking. Go over here. And we're going to use that stomp recoil trick again, just to fall down here. Grab these three notes. Grab three of these notes and then uh, put in five eggs into the hole. And that is all of the eggs we need for the rest of this run until, um, until the Grunty fight. So don't even worry about your egg count anymore. Technically, you don't really have to worry about it past Rusty Bucket Bay because there are so many eggs in Click Clock Wood you run into that if you needed five, you could easily grab them. I'm gonna jump around this guy. Oh, 
grab those notes. And this is pretty tricky uh, token to grab. Let me try it again. If you get hit, not a big deal. There is actually a way to grab that without getting hurt, but I'll show that off later. Grab those two notes now. Show off if you want. Move forward. There's going to be some text. Cancel that as soon as you see it. Jump over this guy. Alright, summer is a little bit harder than spring. You have to jump up these leaves, which are pretty finicky. And then go right and set a left this time. This is a great place to grab feathers if you need them. And make sure you jump around these guys. Try not to get hurt, because they do knock you down for two health, like the green guys from before. Grab that worm. And we're going to bother Gobi a little bit. Let the flower grow a little bit. I don't think you really need to enter a talent shot. You can if you want. Rat a tap rap, and if wall in the air, stomp. Or just re jump and then stomp. I try and do the rat a tap rap and stomp just to try and combine the two things into one. We're gonna go over here, and we're going to beak barge this. Um, just something worth noting is that you can actually destroy that rock with a gold feather if it floats your boat. I wouldn't recommend it, but the option is there. Certainly, the option is there. So from there, we're gonna just go up a little bit. Be very careful. If you're not used to the movement in this game, I recommend taking your time on this part. Notice how I like to use the crawl or the claw position to change the camera if I need to. Just something that I figured I should mention. We're gonna go up here, and that little zoom in walk past them trick only works in spring. So instead, I'm just gonna wait for these guys to go back in. You can also jump around them. Um, I'm just letting you guys know what all the options are. Go up here, stomp, and this is where a majority of our gold feather usage comes from. Go in the center, right above the jiggy, cancel it, and right before the first Zelda hits you, use gold feathers. Now, ideally, when you're entering this place, you want to have 10 gold feathers. And you'll usually use anywhere between 3 and 4 gold feathers in this spot. And you want to use the rest of the gold feathers in fall. Usually anywhere between, well, around four. I'm going to show you guys a trick just in case, oops, just in case you don't have that many gold feathers. Just as sort of a backup strategy. So from here. Go up here. This next part is a little intimidating. The treehouse jump. What we're going to do, we're only going to grab these two feathers, or those notes, excuse me. And there's a spot inside this house, right? Ideally, right here. And we're gonna just jump to that jiggy. Um, it's better to do it full speed. Um, I should say it's faster to do it full speed, but if you need to take your time, by all means, just take it slow. We're gonna talent trot back. Whew, I almost missed that. Talent trot again, and. There are a few ways you can do this. You can either go down, jump to the platform below. You can go to the right, jump on the leaf or the branch. Or you can do what I like to do and just jump behind this guy. Because there is no hitbox behind these guys. And there is actually quite a bit of movement. And then you want to jump off him. I know that looks kind of uh, scary. You don't have to do that. That's just something that I figured that I should show off. Because it will be important later. Anyway, when I kill this guy... For some reason, he's the only guy in the entire game, the first time you kill him, he cues a cutscene. I'm not really sure why they decided to put that in there. Anyway, uh, Shock Spring, just hold back, you'll eventually find it. Keep traversing the, uh, the various, or the crazy air bridge. Grab these five notes. 
grab this worm. Try not to get hit by him, because he could knock you off. And... Go to the edge of this platform. Hopefully it'll cue the birds to pop out. And you should have five worms right now. So, a little bit of time goes by. Fortunately, there's not that much lag. When you feed them the second time, there's going to be a lot of lag. So, you want to try and do some camera manipulation to avoid that. Also, try not to be directly under him when he falls down and goes to sleep, because that can actually knock you through the nest. So from here, if you need feathers, I have 41. 41 is a pretty good number. I could ideally use more. Um, from the edge of this nest, we're just going to fall down and go right to this Mumbo token. And grab this worm. Yep. We're going to spam flutter and just roll down here, grab the Jinjo. And that's it for that's it for summer. And we are out of here. We are done with this level. Not. We're only done with two fifths. We're only done with 40%. Fall, in my opinion, is probably the hardest. I'm gonna grab some more feathers, because why not? 45 is a great number to have. As I said, fall is probably the hardest section, because you have a lot of traversing to do. Cancel text right there, immediately go right, and grab the second worm, because we have one extra from Summer. Grab... Ah! You know... Kill him, because he bothers me. Grab that note, grab these notes, and we're going to go immediately to this Venus Flytrap. He has a different name, I just call him Venus Flytrap. So, I have three gold feathers right now. Ideally, you'd want at least four at this point, because usually to grab all the notes and jump off takes about two gold feathers if you're efficient. So, gold feather, jump up and get off. You want to make sure you go to the left, because if for some reason you go too close and he hits you, you fall in this relatively safe area and you can just try again. Whereas if you fall to the right, you land in the bramble, and there's no convenient way to get back up. You have to go all the way. In fact, that's another shock spring pad. Those are boots, I believe. So you have to traverse all the way back here, or just come back to it. So anyway, after you grab those notes, you want to go to this, this bottom plateau to avoid taking fall damage and just jump off. If you do it any higher, you will actually take fall damage, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, I just canceled Talentrot because I didn't want to get hurt twice. Grab the worm. Say hi to Mumbo. Grab four notes. And then get out of here. We're going to jump off. Just kind of continue the path. We're going to grab this worm on the left. And then we're going to just... Go all the way over here on the right, grab these notes, and we're going to go to the Venus Flytrap. Now, you can do this in one gold feather, but what happens if you have no gold feathers? Let's just say for our sake of argument, you accidentally use all of your gold feathers and you don't know where any more gold feathers are. Well here's a nice backup strategy. As I mentioned before, the back of these Venus Flytraps have no hitbox. With that, you can just jump to the top one and flutter away. That one's an easy one. With the bottom two, you can stomp recoil, and you'll either you'll either try and flutter away and make it without getting hurt, or you'll get hit twice and just run off anyway. So stomp recoil, flutter, or just jump off. And then I got all three notes without gold feathers. So that's just something to keep in mind if you kind of get screwed over in gold feathers. So. Uh, stop Kobe, and finally we get access to the Flower Jiggy. Cancel the Gobi text as he runs off to Banjo Tooie. Run up here, grab the worm. Oh. Excuse me. Grab these notes. Grab that Jinjo, and we're gonna instead of going left, we're gonna go right. And we're just going to keep running until we have the opportunity to go back up the tree. Alright, 
Alright. So, we're gonna jump up this. Remember the birds that we avoided so far before? We're gonna kill them now, because it's actually advantageous to us. And it's part of the rally, so that helps. So, if you can't, or if you want to, you can kill that guy. I like to make sure he's dead, just in case. Um, grab that worm. Grab the four notes and the worm in here. Notice how it's pretty dead. Not a big deal. You know, because, whatever. We already got the jiggy anyway. And we're going to talent trot and go left. From here, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I guess something I should mention is I'm making all of these jumps using uh, talent trot. If you're not comfortable with the movement, I recommend using the jump and flutter. Because that will give you more of a reaction to work with. Once you get more comfortable, then switch to talent trots. From there, grab this. I know that Dragonfly seems intimidating, the Buzz Bomb, and right now he's actually in my path. Ideally, you don't want to kill him. He's not normally straight in your way. Um, you also want to avoid talking to Nabnut, because if you get close to him, he cues a text box. So, break this window. And something to mention that I'm sure you've noticed by now that um, the warm hitboxes are a little bit finicky. The acorn hitboxes are also a little finicky. So that's just, if you miss them, it's blame the game, not the player, for once. So, hey, a couple more feathers for winter. That's great. We're going to high jump here. You actually cannot do a jump stomp. It's not high enough to reach it. From here, um, either just jump and flutter or talent trot jump to it. Either or is fine. Grab that acorn. And there's one acorn right down here. I don't recommend going full speed to it because it's so easy to accidentally just fall off. Maybe if you're really good at the game or if your name is Tass. Grab this worm, and what I'm going to do is similar to the Gobi Valley trick, or similar to Gobi's Valley, when I cling onto the wall, I gain a little bit more altitude. There's three notes right up there. If I just try and jump to it, I'm not going to be able to make it. Oh, hey, fancy that. I did not know you could do that. Anyway, um, what I was going to say was, if you, pff, oops. if you cling the wall, you actually get a little bit more height, and that allows you to grab those notes that way. From there, grab the acorn. I like to talent, cancel talent trot here just because we're going to be talking to this guy. Cancel the text. And it doesn't really matter where you are with these, with uh, when you throw these acorns because he's always going to throw the jiggy right to you. Nabnut might move you a little bit. That's just going to have to be something you work on or kind of figure out yourself. Because look, he'll push me a little bit. Not a big deal. From here, you can either uh, cancel, or you can either kill these birds, or you can kind of maneuver around them so that you don't have to kill any of them. I'm going to try and show off what it looks like when you don't kill any of them. Notice how I'm always moving to the left edge of the platform, and if I'm on the slope, I'm abusing that slope abuse trick, meaning I can last a little less than a second on the slope before I start sliding off. So... Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, I was afraid of that. So, obviously that would not happen in an ideal scenario. I'll just have to take the time loss. The thing is, that third one uh, comes out a little bit faster than the other two. So, he always throws off my timing for some reason. So, we killed the buzz bomb earlier. I don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to kill these guys this time. So, jump, kill, jump, kill. He's already out when I land, so I'm going to wait for him to pop out. And then just stomp this one. And we're, there's one more worm we grab at the, uh, the back of the nest. So grab this worm. That makes 10. If you have more, that's fine. Try and get a good camera angle if you can. This is not a good camera angle. 
slow it's moving. It's ridiculously slow. So I guess now would be a good time to go to the bathroom again. If you have a really small bladder, I guess. But it's not it's not that it's not that long. It is kind of a, annoying to deal with the lag. Not much you can do about it though. And last worm. There we go. Make sure once again you're not too close to uh, the bird or else he will fall on you and knock you through the nest. Bam. So from here, we're gonna roll down here and flutter to the area where we killed the birds. Doesn't matter how much health you have, because we're not death warping. Um, and then we're just gonna jump down and flutter to the flower. Enter Talon Trot. Ah, I tried to get to the top of that nest, or that leaf pile. Unfortunately didn't work. Don't get hit by Big Butt. I've been taking a lot of fall damage. That's what happens in Click Clock Wood. You fall a lot if you're not amazing at this game. And unfortunately, it is normal. So, once you grab all these notes, you'll be at 80. And you do want to quick dive right where that bird is, because there are two notes in uh, Naughty's house. So, rat attack wrap up here. There is a Jiggy here, you can either grab it now, or you can grab it in winter. I'm gonna leave it for winter. Actually, uh, before I do that, I'm gonna just explain some, what I did. So, normally what you're used to is pretend right below me is water. When I land and then go out of Talon Trot, I do the dive. Or I do the quick dive, excuse me. But if I enter Talon Trot when I enter water, I get the exact same effect, it's just not as deep. So, it's kind of, it's the same concept, just with a different action. Anyway, uh, once you finish up with Naughty, uh, you are done with Fall, and we are going on to Winter next. If you need that Mamba token, uh, you can use the similar trick that I showed you before. Consider that a backup token, because we have more than enough tokens for the rest of this. Just for showing off, make my uh, feather count 50. Don't need eggs, as I've mentioned. And we are gonna go left. There is no hen- or pfft, his, his name is Eerie. There is no Eerie we have to worry about as far as cutscenes until we get to the nest. First thing we wanna do now, don't get sniped. Um, we're gonna fly up to this Jinjo, and then I'm gonna use eight feathers, and then delay one more feather to get my altitude at a really good position for grabbing that Jiggy. So, wait until the Jinjo is at the top of the screen, then hold down, grab it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, wait, nine, hold down. Notice how after I grabbed the Jiggy, uh, the Jinjo, I stopped holding it up, not down, up, excuse me. So cancel the text, he poops the Jiggy for once. And the Jiggy actually bounces, making it a little easier to get, if you can grab it first try. So we're gonna just beak bomb all the way over here, thank goodness I did not land. And just break the door. And we could technically have gotten this at any time, but the most convenient time to get it is actually in winter. Jump on the bridge, or jump on the branch, because why not? Excuse me. We're gonna grab these notes, and we're just gonna jump down and flutter. Try and avoid the snowman if you can. He can actually really screw you up. Grab that gold feather. You don't really need it, it's just somewhere to land. And when you flutter here, you wanna make sure you land on that darkened path, because it's night. That will allow you to land and talent shot as opposed to just sliding. And this part, after we do Naughty, is a part called the Ice Clip. It's probably one of the most intimidating tricks in the game. It's also deceivingly easy. So I'm going to show you what it is, and I want you—I encourage you all to actually just try it. 
Um, anyway, for now, jump up. Just use uh, his head and grab that. Or uh, grab the honeycomb. If he's not grabbing it, stomp. That'll give you a little bit more height. And grab that ginger, or th that jiggy, excuse me. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swim into the corner of the water. And then just hold down. That'll let me swim up. And then I will clip through the ice. As I said, this looks extremely intimidating because this will... <sighs> if you drown... It's very easy to drown in this water. So using that twig... That uh, quick dive trick I showed off before. Swim to the right. We're gonna swim to that corner. And then I'm just gonna hold down. And then, boop! Right through the floor. That's a really intimidating glitch, but I do encourage everyone to try it. So notice how I already have 25 tokens. There is one more on the route, but I did grab an extra one just in case. In Rusty Bucket Bay on that bed. Anyway. Um, from here, I'm going to use Nine Feathers Wait for the cabin to show up. I'm also going to be facing this cabin, or facing this wall when I enter flight. Use Nine Feathers Wait, and then Beak Bomb the wall, on, and then I should land on a roof with notes. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, wait. When you see that texture, that means you're flying above the house. So notice how I, I've been getting hurt a lot. I don't have a lot of health. That's fine. That's totally normal. And I'll explain why later. From here, jump there, jump on the bridge, cancel Talon Trot, and then stomp and go into the snowman. And deal with bad camera angles. When you go into the snowman after the stomp, it actually cues a cutscene slightly faster. So that's just something to keep in mind. And this is probably one of the more interesting flights. Spam feathers, don't even know how many. And then once you're at a certain point, beat bomb. You'll fly up. And then ideally you want to grab that in the air. And then you want to jump down here to this area. Now keep in mind, this is actually important. There is a snowman trying to snipe you from here, so you do have to be relatively quick. Anyway, from here, uh, there's two ways to do this part. You can either poop an egg to break the window. Or you can rat a tat wrap the top of the window and try and flutter into it. That's a lot more riskier, but it is a lot faster. Jump up here, talent trot, grab this honeycomb piece. And something to note. Two things. Um, as a reminder, when you collect all the honeycomb pieces, your health fills up. The reason I let it fill up, I could have easily just ran out of the room, is because I want all of that health for Furnace Fun. I should ideally not be getting hit anymore, so this will definitely help. The amount of health I have is very useful. Another thing I should mention is that I have eight honeycomb pieces right now. That should have technically brought me up to nine. There's actually a glitch in this game where the maximum amount of health counters you can have is only eight. So, it's a glitch, but it's on everyone's cartridge, so don't worry about that too much. Anyway, um, with this, just go down here and grab these four notes. You should be at 98. And stomp that and just wall, uh, fall down. So, if you needed that uh, mumbo token, that's fine. Otherwise, you can easily just skip it. And don't forget, the last two notes are right outside Spring. So, huzzah, we have all 100 notes. Anyway, the only thing we're going to do now is transform into B. So we're going to go exactly back up these leaves. I like to zoom in here to avoid any camera catastrophes. And, as I mentioned before, we should have enough. So B is probably the most fun and interesting transformation for multiple reasons. One, you can fly. And two, when you fly, camera or control gets really wonky. So anyway, um, normally, 
I'm gonna fly up left. Something that I should mention is if your feather count was really bad and you could not get that jiggy up there, I probably should have mentioned this earlier actually, you can actually get it all the way up here instead. So if I did not grab that jiggy in winter, it would actually be there instead. Just to show off what you're supposed to do, I'm gonna go right back to Mumbo. So let's pretend that I did get that jiggy. Well, instead, go right or left, depending on your camera position. And grab this Jinjo. Ideally, you wanna land, because you do fall faster if you're on, if you're not flying. Grab that Mumbo token, who really cares? You don't need it. And just hit A once and make sure you're holding B here, because B does speed you up. B is very important for B. B is very important for B. Hey, that's silly. Anyway, after you grab that Jiggy, all you're gonna do is hold B, hit A once, and fly into that corner. Don't even hit A at all, just hold B. And you should just fly through. And then with that, you're done. So, one, two, three, four, five, six times you hit A there, and then hold down. Grab that Jiggy. Technically, I should be at 10. Um, unfortunately, like I said before, I did screw up somewhere. I missed a Jiggy probably off stream. So we're gonna pretend that I have 10 Jiggies and we're gonna pretend I have all 100 Jiggies. Open that note door. Cancel text, cancel text again. And this is probably the most fun, use the term loosely of course, part of the run. Furnace Fun. Um, furnace Fun is annoying for a multiple of reasons. Multitude of reasons, excuse me. Anyway, before I even describe that, cancel text. I'm still using my ring finger to hold talent trot. Um, something I do want to show off before I get too into it. Um, let me just answer this question really quickly. So, Something that I should mention is that whenever you're on the Furnace Fun Squares, you can never run off. So, you treat these as walls. In addition, you can't do anything. There are literally no moves you can use. You cannot attack. So, the only exception to this rule is there's pixels. I don't even know if we'll be able to get it. There is literally, like, a very small pixel right there that you can use ah I wish I stayed in talent drive anyway um, there's a very small spot which you can use any move in unfortunately I lost that spot but you did see it why am I telling you guys this well there's a very interesting trick called um, I guess it doesn't really have a name it's I guess a pseudo furnace fun skip what you would do is you would jump um, in between those two tiles, the the note tile and the banjo tile. So what we're gonna do is combine um, two tricks. We're gonna combine the the fact that we can jump after we roll, kind of something similar to what I showed you in Bubble Goop Swamp. And we're gonna combine, and we're also gonna use that trick where you can stomp through floors, as I showed you in Rusty Bucket Bay. And I'm not gonna hit it. Because this is a very hard trick to show off, I'm just showing it for display purposes. I'm gonna roll off, try and jump, flutter, and then stomp through the floor. If I get this, it would be kind of a miracle. So I'm just showing it off to, sh uh, to just explain what should happen. So roll, jump, flutter. Yeah, I was supposed to go under. Unfortunately, that kind of ex uh, that restriction of using moves also goes for underneath all the tiles. So you have to be in that specific pixel in order to, for that to work. But enough of that, now onto Furnace Fun. Um, for Furnace Fun, even more, actually, no, I'll, actually I'll just mention it now. So there's two ways you can go. You can either go left or right. Right deals with more of a chance of dying. Left deals with more of a chance of losing time because of grunty questions, as opposed to skull squares. For the purposes of this, I will go right, 
And if for some reason I get unlucky and die, which I'll explain later why, then I'll just explain the theory behind these questions. Anyway, so as you probably saw before, this is normal tech speed. You can speed it up normally by holding A. Uh, the answer to this is anchors. But this is the exception to the rule again. You can actually speed up the text by holding both A and B, and that is the fastest you will ever see the text. Whenever you have a picture, just spam A and B alternatively, just to get past the pictures as fast as possible. If you need health, grab it. Try and save it if you're not, especially if you're going left. You should technically be at full health if you killed yourself or if you waited to refill your health. Um, so, as far as the actual theory behind Furnace Fun, there is actually general rules of thumb. So, we know that's in Freezes a Peak in Polar Bear's Air Glue. Um, whenever you hit a Banjo-Kazooie question, actually, before I even get to that, the Jokers have a small chance of giving you a Gruntilda question, uh, which you would only know by asking Bruntilda. So unfortunately, as, as we see here, I have to take a chance. Unfortunately, I didn't get it right. So if you ever do get the first Joker wrong, kill yourself. Because it's honestly a lot more convenient to take the life away and start over and try again. Anyway, let's get back there. Uh, we know the Grillo throws oranges. As far as the Gruntilla questions, there's no real... There's no real trick to them, you just have to kind of know what's going on, unfortunately. And by that, I mean you have to guess. It's always a 33% chance, to my knowledge. Uh, that turning cards you cannot slow down. Which world is this from? Uh, that's from Mad Monster Mansion. They also like to give uh, tricky answers like Rust, Rusty Monster Bay. Rusty Monster Bay. You obviously know that's not a level. Um, if you accidentally miss the question, at the very least you have a 50-50. So hopefully... Okay. We know that's Tip Tup. At, once again, we have Rip Tup the Turtle. We know that's not a character in the game. If you played it enough, Bottles the Mole has a higher pitch voice. So you can definitely do process of elimination. Even if you don't read the answer, or the question, excuse me. So, I like to go to my token answers on these comfy dumpster. Unfortunately not right. Uh, what was my name at Witch's School? I like to go with Cauldron Butt. Hey, I got it. Second try. That's what we consider decent. Um, obviously, the sooner you answer the question, the better. Just gotta roll with the punches, though. Uh, who hides a jigsaw? We know that's not Dabba and not Raba, that's Grabba. Um, whenever you encounter this, this is why we do the Joker questions. We want to skip all of these because they are a huge time sink. So we're just going to skip that. In addition to that, it can also take off a lot of your health. So we always want to skip that. See the picture? That's obviously Click Clock Wood. We were just there. Banjo Kazooie question. What was the time on Church's face? There were no hands on the clock. This is, I guess, a trick question if you weren't paying attention. Uh, music question? Uh, we know that there is no conquer. Nab or Naughty has a lower pitch voice, so we know that it's Nab Nut. I'm just kind of going through these slowly. Obviously, if you know what's going on, you can skip this part. Um, unfortunately, there's also a chance that you can get a Contilla question here. So let's help see what happens. Fortunately, it didn't happen. We know that's Eerie the Eagle. It's just kind of a little inside joke. We also like to call this bird Henry for some reason. It's a long time inside joke. Now you're in on the joke. This is another grunty question. Um, I like to say Undead Ed. It's never Undead Ed. I like to think it is, but it never is. The good news is we, when you go right, you don't really need to worry too much about health. Because if you're going to lose the run in Furnace Fun, it's going to be because uh, of a Skull Square rather than Grunty Questions. Oh man, I'm getting all these wrong. Uh, Dung Brown. Ah! If you do bring yourself down to one health, either double back for health... Ooh, 50-50, this is lucky. Okay, either double back for health or use your Joker. We do get access to one more Joker question, but I'll show you that later. Um, 
We know that a shoal of fish was in Mumbo's Mountain. Uh, you might think a hungry shark, but that is not in Mumbo's Mountain. Uh, actually, something I should mention, I'll mention it at the next Banjo-Kazooie Square. Uh, that's Mumbo's Mountain. You want to be, ma you want to make sure you're paying attention, and make sure you always speed through the text. So we know that's Clankers from the blowhole. Um, that is the blue egg noise. Something I guess also worth mentioning is that if you ever get the extra life sound, and you skip that, t and you skip that noise, it can actually glitch the music in this. It's kind of silly. So we're actually going to use our Joker on this Grunty question. And pray it's not a Grunty Square, thank goodness. We know that's Bubble Gloop Squamp. Excuse me again. So we get two more Jokers, and we're going to save these for later. For the Banjo-Kazooie questions, if you ever get a question that says, um, how many of this? Half the time, or most of the time, if you have no idea what the question is, Pick the middle answer. It's almost always right. There are some exceptions. Uh, we know that his name is Snacker. Because he snacks on you. But most of the time, like, one of the questions is how many Furnace Fun tiles are on this board? The answer is 94. There's no way in heck you're going to know that. But it is the middle option. So make sure you, in the case of a number question, if you don't know what the answer is, pick the middle. Once again, skip this. And this is the reason people don't, don't like going right. Because they have to deal with all three of these. That is um, a gold feather. Gold feather, uh, red feather kind of flutters. Da -da 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 -da. Whereas gold feather is. Da -da 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 -da. That's a little. That's one people get caught up on. So you do have to think about it a little. That is treasure trove cove. And hopefully, we get lucky on this one. Oh, won't this be unfortunate? Oof. Alright, well, I'll talk a little bit more about Furnace Fun questions, but feel free to skip to the next section if you want.